Hello, it's been a while since the last screencast. In this one I look back at the question asked by a user identifying himself as KK on the quantitative user mailing list. And well, without further ado, it was in 2013, well, going from the date that he used in the, in the question at least. And the idea was to, to price an interest rate swap and to perform some kind of cash flow analysis on the, on its coupons. Uh, the, the, the full question had included bootstrapping and the corresponding swap curve and, uh, and uh, the, the, the corresponding quotes. I'll just skip through that and just instantiate the curve with the corresponding forward rates. The interesting part starts when we instantiate the floating leg of the swap. It's paying semi-annual GBP LIBOR and, uh, well, no option other than whatever. The length was one year, just a couple of coupons. And here is how we build the schedule, starting from uh, uh, January 7 and going for two to two, one year later. And finally, we build the floating leg. This is all good. As I said, KK wanted to do some cash flow analysis. In particular, he wanted to reproduce the, 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 the coupon and the, the, the rate and thus the amount paid by, by the coupons. His calculation was uh, simple enough. Basically, he took from the schedule the start and end date of each coupon, the corresponding, well, the corresponding fixing date and uh, fixing retrieved from the index that uh, he just instantiated, and well, also the corresponding accrual period as uh, actual over 365. The amount should have been the index fixing multiplied by the nominal uh, of the leg and uh, in the corresponding accrual period. Here is uh, the full calculation. So first coupon, January to July, second July to January. This is the corresponding index fixing, accrual period and uh, the expected amount. Unfortunately, looking at the results from the library, so retrieving the amount and the rate from the coupons itself, themselves, we get something which is, uh, well, we get the same result for the for the first coupon. We get something which is slightly, but, well, significantly different for the second coupon. And, uh, well, the question was about what, what is the problem in this, uh, what was the problem in, in his uh, setup and calculation. The setup was okay, and so was the calculation problem, and uh, we can go through them again. So, I'll just uh, take the, 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 the second coupon, I'll, I'll cast it to floating rate coupon so we can have the full set of inspectors. And uh, I can retrieve its fixing date and the corresponding fixing from the index. So, it's July the 8th and this is the index fixing and uh, it corresponds uh, point, uh, 3.60. 56 corresponding to what uh, he retrieved uh, with uh, his calculations. And uh, how do we justify this rate? Well, the start rate and end date for this coupon, for well, for this fixing date, let's say, are the corresponding value date. In this case, for GBP library, we don't have any fixing dates, so it's the same as the fixing date. And then the maturity date, which for a semi-annual LIBOR is six months later. So from July 8th, we go to January 8th. The corresponding rate is the forward rate between these two dates forecast of the, the LIBOR curve. So we can extract it from the curve. And what we get is the same thing that the index returns from its fixing method. What was the problem then and uh, why the amount calculated and rate calculated by the coupon are different? Well, for historical reasons, 
from when we started coding Quantlib, floating rate coupons are calculated at par, meaning that if we look at the start and end date for the coupon, they are not the same as the start and end date for the corresponding fixing of the of the LIBOR. Well, that's because uh, we created a schedule starting on the January the 7th and so anchored on the 7th of the month and this July 8th is just a, a, an accident due to, 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 to a holiday the previous day so we go January 7th to July 8th but in, in the second coupon we start from July 8th but we get back to January 7th which is where the, the schedule is, is anchored this causes the coupon to be one day shorter than the, 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 the tenor of the library and since we are calculating power coupons what the library does is to forecast this the forward rate between the start and end date of the coupon this one is of course a bit different from what is forecast over the, the correct tenor and it is the same thing, the same value which is returned by coupon rate and well the coupon amount is, amount is that then just consistent with this rate and follows this calculation. Is it right or wrong to do this? I don't have a, a final answer. My, my sympathy is for going to, to, to you for using the actual index fixing so what uh, what kk expected as well i've been arguing for this uh, and uh, but we didn't reach an, uh, an agreement uh, because there are there are also um, drawbacks to, to, to using this uh, that the, the one I'm, I'm, i've been mostly told is that uh, we would be accruing a LIBOR based, uh, calculated on, on this tenor over a different period, so to be precise we would also use a, a convexity adjustment. Uh, I can see that but I'm not persuaded that, that this is uh, any less precise than using the, the, the wrong rate, so to speak, the rate calculated on the, on the wrong uh, tenor. Also, another drawback is of using par coupon is that when the fixing date finally comes, you risk having a small jump in your in your PNL as you switch from forecasting over the first uh, uh, range uh, over the coupon the coupon uh, span to using a fixing calculated on a, on a, on a, the, the correct uh, LIBOR tenor. The good news is you can choose which one to use. The bad news is the bad news is that uh, this is not uh, a, a runtime setting. It is a compiled time setting instead, meaning that uh, in case uh, you are using Windows, you will have to go into QL user config dot HPP and you are going to uncomment this this macro. So, once this is defined, the library starts using index coupons. In case you're using another um, operating system, in another compiler instead, you can pass a corresponding flag to, to configure. So, if you ask configure for help, it's going to give you a number of flags that you can pass to configure the library. One of these is uh, this one, which again enables index coupons and uh, well with this uh, we are at the end of, of uh, this uh, this screencast uh, well thanks for listening and uh, until next time bye